There is a large variety of Super Smash Bros. stages, from basic platform layouts, to auto-scrolling stages, to transformation stages, to outrageously big stages that were not created for two players in mind. There is a ton, but like with anything, there are some that just completely suck. This may be for a variety of different reasons, and that is what I'm going to talk about today. These are the top 10 Super Smash Bros. stages I hate. Mushroomy Kingdom from Brawl The first, and definitely not the last, scrolling stage on the list. Mushroomy Kingdom is two stages in one. There's a stage for 1-1 one, one, and 1-2 one, from the original Super Mario Bros. And they both have this gritty theme that ties well with the realistic character models of Brawl. But I personally don't think 1-1 one, one is a bad stage. Sure, the fact that it scrolls makes it a stage that I hardly ever pick, but it doesn't go too fast and there's a lot of room for everyone to fight. However, the same cannot be said for the cramped and murky 1-2 stage. The 1-2 level does not make for a good stage. Maybe if the entire line of bricks at the top were removed, then maybe? But then it wouldn't be an exact replica of 1-2. But would anyone really care? In fact, I don't think anyone would even care if this stage just didn't exist. What was even the point of making a stage based on 1-2 when there's already a perfectly fine recreation of 1-1? Did the game developers feel that a recreation of one of the most popular video game levels of all time wasn't enough, so they just put in the stage that comes after the most popular level too? I guess it can be seen as an added bonus, but it's the kind of bonus I would have been fine without. Maybe I should go over why I don't like 1-2 since I haven't really yet. What makes this stage such an ass to play on is the overabundance of bricks. These bricks just make the stage feel so cramped, and anytime you die, you spawn above the actual stage. So why even go back down to the actual stage if you just make your opponent come to the top so you can kill them with an up throw? It's also a scrolling stage, which is the only thing keeping me from enjoying 1-1, so that sure doesn't help 1-2's case. Mushroomy Kingdom was brought back on the 3DS, but only the 1-1 stage, which is how it should have been all along. Seeing as this stage was shown in the Smash Ultimate character trailer, hopefully it's just 1-1 again, so we don't have to endure the confined trash of 1-2. Orbital Gate Assault from Wii U. I really don't want to put this stage on here. According to Sakurai, this stage took an entire year to develop, so I really don't want to shit all over something that had so much time and care put into it. But there is just way too much going on. Everyone will spawn on the Great Fox, which would have been a perfectly good stage by itself, but no, we have to make this as chaotic as humanly possible. So after being on the Great Fox for like 30 seconds, Everyone is dumped onto a missile that is sent careening into a force field. It'll stay attached for a while, so it's recommended that everyone stays away from the missile head because it'll damage you if you go close. After a while, the missile will blow up and you will hopefully fall onto the three R wings that go zooming by. Then the three R wings will drop you onto another missile that'll explode and drop you onto R wings going in a different direction that'll put you back on the Great Fox just to repeat the whole process over again. Some sections of this stage are fine, like the Great Fox, and the second R-Wing formation is actually really fun, but everything flies by so quickly. I will admit that it would have been kind of lame if it was just another Great Fox stage, but that would have been so much better than being put in the middle of this chaotic mess. Green Greens from Melee the layout of the actual stage isn't that bad, but what irritates me about it are the stage hazards. Well, there's one stage hazard in particular, but the others make it more annoying. Wispy Woods and his wind shenanigans are back from Dreamland. And is it just me, or is the wind more powerful in this game? A new hazard added are the apples that fall from Wispy. They don't really affect the match that much, so they're fine. But the second new gimmick are these blocks that will constantly fall between the ground of the stage. They're annoying, but what's even more annoying are these bomb blocks. If you hit one of these, then it'll do around 20% to you and send you flying. And you'll most likely die because the blast zones are incredibly close to the stage. And what makes these bombs even worse is that Wispy will blow you closer to them, making for accidental collision with the blocks. In Dreamland, the wind hardly, if ever, affects the outcome of the match. But in Green Greens, it most certainly will. 
This stage was brought back for some reason in Brawl and still sucks. It is also coming back in Smash Ultimate, but I've heard that stage hazards have the possibility of being turned off, so I'm fine with it returning. They'll still die incredibly early, but oh well. At least it won't be the doing of the bombs. Port Town Aero Drive from Brawl. This stage aesthetically looks pretty sweet. It looks so much cooler than Mute City and Big Blue from Melee. Those tracks, while fun, just look really bland. Port Town, on the other hand, has this rugged yet futuristic look to it that really helps it stand out. The layout of the track is also like Mute City, where you're on a flat platform that'll drop you off onto platform sections on the road. And like Mute City, there are cars that'll drive past you while you're fighting. This would be fine, but too bad the cars have absolutely insane knockback. If you get hit by a car at like 40% or higher, you're pretty much dead. I know in Mute City, getting hit by a car could be costly, but another problem I have with Port Town is that the cars can hit you when you're on the platforms. Isn't the point of the platforms to keep you out of the way of the cars? What's even the point of them? You might as well just set the players in the middle of the street. Oh wait. Luckily, the cars don't feel nearly as common as in Mute City, but when they show up, they just ruin all the fun. Hannonbow from Brawl. Granted, this stage is unique, but not very fun to fight on. Hannonbow is a stage that comes from the series Electroplankton which is some music creator game for the DS. The stage consists of these leaves that'll angle themselves in random directions when they're hit, making it pretty annoying to actually hit your opponent. This stage also has basically no music, which is ironic considering the type of game the stage comes from, and the lack of music and simple design makes this stage pretty boring to fight on. And to be honest, I don't see Hannonbow coming back in Smash Ultimate, unless the game is going to include all stages. Pac-Man from the Wii U. I really like how Pac-Man got two stages when most of the third-party characters only got one. The only other third-party character to get to is Sonic, but he's been in both Brawl and Smash 4, so it made sense that he was given another one. But Pac-Man got Pac-Maze on the 3DS and Pac-Land on the Wii U. Pac-Maze is pretty fun and is a stage that I hope returns, while Pac-Land is an auto-scroller with some really annoying platforming. In this stage, you play through the town level, the bridge level, the mountain level, in the fairy world, which doesn't sound that bad, but there are so many hazards that are just so annoying, like these fire hydrants and these logs. This level also requires very precise platforming, which is not what I should be focusing on when playing Smash. And just as an extra, the Omega stage is probably the worst Omega stage ever created. Why couldn't it have taken place on a building that is in town with an actual background or something? The mountain is just so bland. And you also can't wall jump off this wall, because of course you can't. Rumble Falls from Brawl What's worse than having to play through a moving stage? Having to traverse through a moving stage that scrolls up. Why is this a thing? Why do I have to constantly jump from platform to platform? I mean, at least the stage is consistent and repeats itself, but that doesn't make it fun. There are also these platforms that you can't go through, which is just inconvenient, and these spikes that'll do a little damage or one hit kill. The stage will also randomly speed up out of nowhere, so instead of focusing on damaging my opponent, I have to focus on saving my own ass. But like I said, at least the platforming is consistent, and I don't have to scroll down, unlike... Icicle Mountain from Melee. What's worse than a stage that scrolls up? Playing in a stage that scrolls up and down with varying speeds that are not telegraphed. At least with Rumble Falls, the text speed up shows up on screen to signify that the stage is getting faster. 
Icicle Mount will just speed up out of nowhere, and sometimes it's just way too fast. There are also ice physics, which is everyone's favorite, along with platforms being randomly generated. Rumble Falls kept the stage consistent upon each playthrough. This one is just completely random every time you play. And don't get me wrong, there are some scrolling stages I like. For example, Rainbow Cruise. What I like about this stage is 1. The platforms are consistent upon each playthrough, and 2. It stays at a consistent speed that is slow enough to actually play Smash. The stage isn't perfect, like the platforms will randomly disappear which is pretty annoying, and I don't think I'd be hurting anyone's feelings by saying this stage would have been much better if it took place on the ship and that's it. But it still leaks better than Icicle Mount. At least scrolling stages seem to have gotten better, seeing as this is the last scrolling stage on the list along with it being the first one, but I wouldn't be heartbroken if one didn't appear in Smash Ultimate. Mario Bros. from Brawl. I'm mixed on the concept of these old school retro levels being made into stages. The levels picked never translate well into Smash Bros and they just feel kinda lazy. Like why not make a unique Smash Bros stage, but in the style of Kirby's Dream Land for the Game Boy. You can even keep the Game Boy borders and the color and stuff. I do like the unique stages that use assets from older games like the Flat Zone stages, Mushroom Kingdom from N64, and Mushroom Kingdom 1 and 2 from Melee. And there are some levels from video games that translate pretty well like Duck Hunt. But the absolute worst level turned to Smash Bros stage has to be Mario Bros. This stage is so cramped, the blast zones are incredibly close to the stage, and the enemies that show up very frequently do insane knockback if thrown at your opponent. They also will turn into faster enemies if not picked up in time, and will make the stage even more annoying. At least with 75M, I could stay away from the hazards, and there was actual room to fight, but there is one retro-themed stage that I personally feel is worse. Venom from Super Smash Bros. Melee. Venom just has a really awkward stage layout that I'm not a big fan of, but I personally think, aesthetically, it looks pretty cool. The Great Cave Offensive from Wii U. Way too big. But this was obviously made for 8 player smash in mind, and it's not that bad when playing with 7 other people, so I didn't really add it on the list. New Pork City from Brawl. This stage is also very big, but with this one there is just so much empty space. There's also this weird pink devil thing that'll randomly spawn and one hit kill you if it touches you, so that's really fun. Any stage with a boss. I'm trying to fight my opponent, so why the fuck is there this massive thing keeping me from doing that? Thank god I can turn off stage hazards in Ultimate. 75M from Brawl. Not as bad as Mario Bros, but still not very fun. Balloon Fight from 3DS. This has got to be both the most forgettable and awful stage ever created in Smash Bros. And all I have to do is show it to you. Or well, show all three variants to you. Yeah, how many of you knew there were three variants to this stage? But just look at the entire layout of this thing. The entire middle section is pretty much death because of the annoying fish that'll grab you. You can't mash out of it, but someone will capitalize on the opportunity. The top portion would be fine if the bumpers were gone and the star that showed up didn't show up, and the ground on the left and the right is probably where you will spend the majority of your time. If you get sent towards the blast zone, you're dead. You're just absolutely dead. The blast zones are way too close, but what baffles me is the fact that if you walk into the blast zone, you'll appear on the other side. And to be honest, I kind of wish that was implemented even if you got sent that way by an opponent. Imagine how chaotic this would be if there was no blast zones on the side, just the bottom and the top. It'd still be a pretty bad stage and that probably would just make it even more annoying, but at least the matches would be interesting. Anytime I would play Smash on this stage, the match would always end in a matter of seconds because all I had to do was grab my opponent and throw them into the blast zone. Apparently this stage is coming back for ultimate and I'm not really that bothered by it. To be honest, I think it'd be cool if every stage returned. We are getting Omega and Battlefield variants after all, but this stage is definitely one that I will never be playing on. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. 
Be sure to leave your least favorite Smash Bros. stages in the comments below. With Super Smash Bros. Ultimate coming out in December, I decided to make these videos a bit earlier than initially intended. You see, I was going to upload these videos exactly one year after my Smash Characters video series, but the hype that is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate pushed production sooner. My next video is not going to be a top 5 favorite Smash 64 stages, rather I'm going to rank my f least favorite to my favorite. As you can see, none of the Smash 64 stages actually made it onto the Smash stages I hate list because I don't really hate any of them, but there are some that aren't great, and I kind of want to just talk about all of them since there are only 9. I remember thinking about doing this with the characters too, but uh, I just decided not to and just do the top 5. But with stages, I will be doing a top 9 list, so that'll be a first. And then I'll be doing Melee and Brawl and Smash 4, and when Ultimate comes out, I'm not going to be doing it immediately, but I'll do favorite characters, characters I don't like, from Ultimate, and uh, stages I don't like, and stages I do like. Well, I probably won't be doing stages I don't like, because a lot of them are probably going to be returning stages, so... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see when the time comes. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and see you next time. Goodbye.